Like, what is the FASB, Financial Accounting Standards Board, what do they do? What is the FASB, what does the Financial Accounting Standards Board do? Anyone know? It's a private company that gets to make up the accounting rules. It's the only, only type of business, accountants. We have a private company that gets to make up accounting rules. It's the FAF, FASB, Financial Accounting Standards Board. These rules that they make up. Is that in our book by chance? Mm -hmm. It's over on page uh, 21. Page 21. This is on page 21. This is the financial accounting standards board. They get to make up the rule. I don't think your book talks about the SEC yet. All right, so they, what they do is they make up GAAP. GAAP is generally, here's GAAP. G-A-A-P, generally accepted accounting principles. All right, for GAAP. GAAP, Generally Accepted Accounting Principles. All right, that's what the FASB puts out, and the rest of us follow it. So the FASB is a private organization. They make up GAAP. GAAP is what the rest of us have to follow. Some of the examples that they give in your book is they talk about accounting period. What is an accounting period? Well, for the university, the university has an accounting period that goes from September 1st to August 31st. Now, why would they do that? When do students usually come into this university? Fall, then they stay till the next August. Um, if uh, I am Walmart, do you think my, uh, my accounting year is January 1st to December 31st? Before you answer that, let me tell you, at the end of your uh, counting year is the busiest time of the year you've got. And you've got to count all your inventory, you got to do a lot of extra work. So how busy is it at Walmart on December 31st? Do you want to be counting inventory at Walmart on December 31st? No. So they've got some weird thing like theirs ends like the third Thursday in February or something like that. That's an accounting period. So when you go and you look at their accounting uh, annual report, they've got an accounting period there. So when you compare their income statement from this year, this year, and this year, you've got to put at least three years on there, they're going to have the exact same accounting period. It's an artificial period that they made up. So the university's period is September 1st to August 31st. Some companies are January 1st to December 31st. But when you put those three years there, they've all got to be the exact same time period. You pick your year, and then you stick with it. All right, the next one is adequate disclosure. If you looked at a company's annual report, they have an uh, income statement, they have a statement of retained earnings, they have a balance sheet, they'll have a statement of cash flows. That's about four or five pages. Then they got about 30 to 200 pages after that explaining everything. The way it works in accounting is sort of like selling a house in the state of Texas. If I'm going to sell you my house and I know it has a major defect, in the state of Texas I have to tell you. Otherwise you can come back and sue me and I have to give you your money back. It's the same way in business. If you think that it will affect my decision, you've got to tell me about it. No secrets. That's what we call full disclosure. At, right after those financial statements, if you think that uh, by telling me this information that that would affect my decision to buy your stock or to loan you money, you got to tell me. You can't keep secrets. You've got to have full disclosure. You've got to tell everything. Everything that's going to affect my decision. All right, then you got the business entity. All right, basically it means that each entity needs to have its own set of accounting records. So if you start a business today, the business is an entity, you're an entity. So if you go get a haircut today, should you write a business check or a personal check? Better write a personal check if you don't want to get in trouble with the IRS. 
And from an accounting point of view, that's unacceptable. Is your sorority or fraternity, if you're in one, is that an entity? Yes. If you're paying dues, if you're paying dues, do you want to know where that money was spent? Or you just give it to them and don't care? I want to know what they're doing with my money. And so uh, every entity has to have its own set of accounting records. Now, cost concept. Cost concept is one of the weirdest things we have in accounting. Cost concept really applies to your, to your property, your land, your buildings, and your equipment, these big ticket items. The way it works is this. If I buy a building today and I pay $5 million for it, I put it on my balance sheet in the asset section for $5 million. Five years from now, it's still on the balance sheet for $5 million. Now, is that logical? Maybe not. So if you go and look at a balance sheet for Walmart, can you look at their property, plant, equipment and tell how much it's worth? It's how much they paid for it, not what it's worth. Now, if you were going to loan them money, you'd probably want to know what it's worth. But you'd have to get that information from someplace besides the balance sheet. Um, if, um, let's say that I bought a piece of land um, in downtown Austin, and I paid $5 million for it 40 years ago. And yesterday, he went and bought one right across the street, just exactly like mine, but he paid $120 million for it. If you looked at our balance sheets today, his would say $120 million. Mine would still have that same small number. That's what I paid for it. And the reason for that is because I can prove what I paid, he can prove what he paid. If you start letting people do appraisals and changing the numbers, is there the chance for fraud? Yes, so right now we've been unwilling to change it. So sometimes on a test question they'll say, all right, to, uh, on September the 1st you bought a piece of land for, for $10,000. Today it's worth $20,000. You think you can sell it tomorrow for thirty? dollars so when I look at your balance sheet, how much is going to be on your balance sheet? It's so whatever you paid for it. It's not what it's worth today. All right, so going concern. Going concern is a weird thing that is special to accounting. When I look at your financial statements, when I look at the information that you put out, I assume that you are going concern. That means that you're going to operate indefinitely. If you are thinking about going bankrupt, if you are thinking about going bankrupt, then you are not a going concern, and there's a whole different set of accounting rules. So again, no secrets. If you're not a going concern, you think you're gonna, uh, if you think you're gonna go out of business, you're gonna have problems, then you're not a going concern, and you have to do your accounting records a different way. So what do you think GM should have done this last year? you think they were going concerned, or do you think in their notes they should have had some disclosures? They probably should have had a bunch of disclosures. Uh, matching concept. Matching concepts matches what? Matches the revenues in the month with the expenses in the month. So if I look at any particular month or year, if I look at September, I need to know Every service you perform, every dollar of service you perform is recorded in September. Every cost you had is recorded in September, and it doesn't make any difference when, when you paid it or when you got paid. If you earned it, you put it in that month. If you owed it, you put it in that month. So you're matching your revenues and your expenses. So the matching principle means matching revenues and expenses on your income statement. So if I look at the income statement for September, it's every service that was performed that month and every bill for that month, whether it was paid for or not. 